Hello everyone, the US stock market fell on Friday, ending a four-week winning streak as the Federal Reserve signals more hawkish rate hikes. So in this video, I will recap on the comments made by the Fed officials and what does it mean for the stock market. Also, if you had followed my last video, you will know I have mentioned that I was waiting for the next pullback to pick up some shares bit by bit for my long-term portfolio. So now the pullback is here, and as a follow-up, I will share some potential entry points where I am looking to pick up some stocks along with this pullback. Therefore, do stay throughout the video to find out more. Okay, a very quick market recap. In case you missed it, let's review what exactly did the Fed officials say last week which has likely resulted to the stock market falling significantly on Friday. So firstly, James Bullard said that he is leaning towards raising interest rate by 75 basis points in September. Then we have Mary Daly saying that rate height of 50 or 75 basis points next month would be reasonable. And she further added fuel to the fire by suggesting or rather reminding that the Fed could keep raising interest rates into 2023. So essentially, the Fed officials are voicing support for more aggressive rate hikes. And this is not ideal for the stock market. As a result, US stocks fell on Friday as investors reassessed the Fed comments and their pivot decision. And if you could recall, in my last video, I have shared that the rally over the last one and a half months is very likely a sentiment rally, where the stock market viewed that inflation has peaked and the Fed is pivoting and reducing interest rate hikes. So now that the sentiment and views have changed, the stock market naturally reacted in the opposite way and the rally lost momentum. To also highlight, the US dollar index climbed to a fresh one-month high towards the end of last week. And in case you are not aware, usually, though not always, US dollars move in opposite direction of the stock market. Okay, so the story towards the end of last week was all about repricing and reassessing Fed's interest rate hikes. And I wouldn't be surprised that this narrative gets brought into this coming week. Other than this, another potential landmine for the week would be none other than Jerome Powell, who will be speaking on Friday at the Central Bank's Economic Policy Symposium. In the past, Powell has used this speech to share notable policy changes. And who knows if he will spring some surprises for the stock market this week. Once again, as a recap, the next FOMC meeting to decide on the next rate hike is scheduled for September 20th and 21st. At this point, I think the market has gone back to a less optimistic state as they are divided over whether the interest rate hike will be 50 or 75 basis points. And oh, before September's FOMC meeting, we will have another round of CPI number to be released on 13th September. Other significant economic reports to take note of would be August Jobs Report and Consumer Price Index. Anyhow, personally, I think the recent remarks by the Fed's officials and upcoming Powell's comments could potentially set the tone for the market from now till 13 September when the next CPI figure is out. Okay, now let's have a look at things from a technical perspective. But before that, I hope you can help to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel if you have found some value in my videos. Thank you. Alright, last week, the major indices such as S&P 500, Dow Jones and Russia 2000 all pulled back from key resistance level of 200 moving average. Many growth stocks which had made huge movement towards the upside in the past two months fell heavily. This is not surprising as I have previously shared that volatility works both ways. The stock market can climb really fast and fall equally fast or sometimes even faster. Now let's look at SPY. This portion is quite important, so if possible, I hope you don't skip this segment as its movement pretty sums up the sentiment and movement of the broader market. Okay, on the weekly chart, SPY hit the major resistance last week, which is the 50 moving average, and close below it. Here comes the interesting stuff. A shooting star candlestick has been formed, and this is a bearish signal. It is more effective if it is formed after at least three consecutive rising candlesticks, and in this case, we had four. To clarify, this does not mean that the coming week is definitely going to be red, though the probability is high, so do look out for confirmation. At the end of the upcoming week, the next candlestick's high has to be lower than the high of this shooting star, which is 431.7. Not just that, the next candlestick will also have to close below the current closing price of the shooting star, which is 422.1. So keep these two levels in mind, okay? 431.7 and 422.1. 
Okay, if you have learned something, do help to like and subscribe, okay? Alright, now let's move on to the daily chart. I have previously mentioned that I would want to see more indices reclaim the 200 moving average to be bullish. And last week, SPY attempted to do so. As you can see, it tested the 200 moving average line on 3 or 4 occasions, but ended up getting rejected and closed below it on Friday. As we enter the new week, watch out for the 50% retracement level at 419. Boost would want to defend this support level. Otherwise, I think the gap between 412 to 416 will likely to be filled, after which the next support level is 406. Okay, right now, I would like to bring your attention to this level 406. To be honest, I'm not sure what is the extent of this pullback. It could fall really deep and I will be happy to sweep out discounted stocks. But if it doesn't, then I believe it will bounce off at one of the key support levels. So in order for me not to miss out any rally, my first entry point for some of the stocks I'm looking at will likely happen when SPY hits 406. Reason is because, other than the Fibonacci retracement level, this level actually coincides nicely with another key level, which is the 50 exponential moving average. And just in case you didn't catch me, I am not buying SPY, I'm just using it as a gauge for the broader market to buy other stocks I want. With this being said, if I were to be very honest, I am of the view that we may potentially go even lower. Then you must be wondering, why not wait for SPY to go below 400? Why 406? Well, you're not wrong to think that way. So here's the thing, I am not a fortune teller and I could be wrong. Therefore, I thought it is okay to step in a little bit at 406. But of course, if it goes lower and head towards the next key level at 389, I will be more excited. So yeah, that's my plan, and uh, please do not follow blindly. Would suggest you do your own research and carve out your own strategy. Meanwhile, on the upside, per what I've shared, it needs to close above 200 moving average, which currently stands at 428. And to be even more bullish, it has to break above the crucial 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level at 433. When both happens, we can say goodbye to the bears and my existing strategy. But at this point, I really can't see any reason for it to happen, and sellers seem to be stepping in aggressively. Well, I could be wrong, let's see. Alright, for Apple, let's also have a look at the weekly chart first. A gravestone doji candlestick was formed last week, and this is a bearish pattern. This candlestick means that bulls tried to bring it up, hence the long upper shadow. But by the end of the week, bears and sellers are exiting pressure and brought the stock back to almost where it started. This could also mean buyers are exhausted. Now let's move on to the daily chart. As you can see, I have drawn two dotted lines previously, which both act as a strong resistance level. Apple went into the zone marked by the two lines for only a day, got rejected and went back down. Long story short, it needs to break above these two lines to have a high chance of testing the all-time high. But it seems like this is a supply zone where sellers start stepping in. Anyway, these two levels are around 174 and 176. On the downside, it appears that we have a fair bit of room to fall. The first meaningful support is the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level at 161, followed by a 200 moving average at 160. If both breaks, then the short term trend will revert to bearish. Personally, I am waiting for it to go below 160 before even considering picking up a few shares. After 160, the next support is at 155, which I thought is a level that we can consider to dip our toes in a little bit. But deep inside my mind, I am hoping to pick up more shares at 140's range instead. Anyway, just wanted to also highlight Apple is the biggest boy in the stock market. So if it falls from 170's to 150's, we will likely see bloodbath in the entire market. Therefore, similar to SPY, I do use Apple's movement to give me a clue and sensing of the market sentiment. Alright Tesla, similar to SPY, it tested the 200 moving average on a few occasions and got rejected. This clearly shows that 200 moving average is a major resistance, which currently stands at 903, very close to the psychological level of 900. If you had followed my last video, you would have noted that I mentioned Tesla has room to fly and can go all the way up to 1000 and yet still in a downward trend. And now we can say the same thing for the downside. There are lots of room to fall as well and investors shouldn't be alarmed. 
take a look at the MACD, it just crossed in a bearish manner and if it continues, we really do have some room for the downside. Finally, check out the gap at around 751 to 764. In my view, it is a matter of time that it gets filled. So I am here to mentally prep you first, but of course I could be wrong. To add on, I am considering dipping my toes in at sub 800 level. But ultimately, I am hoping to add even more shares at the gap area between 750s to 760s range. And in the post split world, these levels that I have mentioned will be 250s to 260s range. Moving on to Google. Throughout this entire rally, Google seems to be the weakest. To be honest, I'm not sure what's wrong with 120. As you can see from the chart, somehow Google just cannot stay above 120. As a quick recap, look out for the zone between 120 to 125, where I believe it's a supply zone where many sellers tend to step in. Therefore, Google needs to break above this area to unlock more upside to the 130s range. On the downside, 100 is a massive psychological support. And I think for now, 105, um, give and take a little bit, presents good buying opportunity. For Microsoft, just like some other major stocks, it also got rejected at the 200 moving average. If the market wants to fall, I think the downside is quite a fair bit as the next meaningful support is at 270. If that breaks, we will go into this consolidation zone between 240 to 270, which I think is a good area to add some shares. To add on, take note that the MACD is curling down too, but not confirmed yet. Once confirmed, then Microsoft will fall. On the upside, there is a gap between 291 to 294 that hasn't been filled. Who knows, the market makers may just push it up a little bit to fill it and then bring it down. But if the market continues to react negatively to Fed officials' comments, then this may not happen. Okay, here are my end thoughts. Personally, I think the market and its recent rally are fragile and shaky. Any sign of bad news will cause it to fall. And to be frank, and also as a reminder again, investors who FOMO into buying the stocks recently should relook at the macro environment and factors. I mean, let's not talk about the war, supply chain, technical recession, etc. Let's just look at US inflation rate. Yes, the figure has dropped from June's 9.1% to July's 8.5%. But hey, inflation is still very high at 8.5%. And I think this pose and meme that I have posted on Momo pretty sums it up. Also, just to recap, remind or highlight or in case you are simply not aware, Fab's intention is to bring inflation down to 2%. And currently at 8.5%, it means we are still very far off from the target. And isn't this an obvious sign that Fab still has a lot of work to do to combat the high inflation? Anyway, regarding the current pullback, you will never know if this is going to be a so-called healthy and modest pullback or will it turn out to be something more extreme. Well, I can't speak for you, but for me, this is yet another opportunity and time to keep an eye of the stocks on my watch list, like how I did in May this year. I will likely make use of this pullback, in my view, an opportunity to pick up shares along the way at my desired target price as shared earlier in my video. With all being said, investors should still remain cautious and if you are uncomfortable, feel free to wait to see how this pullback plays out and dip your toes into the market bit by bit by buying in tranches. This is something that I have been sharing over the last few months. Alright, that's all for this video. Hope you have learned something today again and I also hope my content has value added to your research. If it does, please help to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much.